Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous winter day here in South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Wednesday morning, January 30th, 2013. So it is time for my regular Wednesday morning climate meltdown roundup. Uh, where I go on the pages of the mainstream media right here on Yahoo News to the science environment page to uh, For further evidence right here on the mainstream media that uh, this planet is quickly uh, Descending into a burning lake of fire as the greenhouse gases and the resultant global warming and the other various climate changes kill us all. And guys, uh, I have to give the, the mainstream media a, uh, a hand on this. Uh, despite the unbelievable pressure they, that editors and publishers must be under uh, from these goddamn uh, Climate change deniers, which I will, uh, which is a major story on here. Uh, they do a pretty good job about uh, reporting on the single biggest threat, the most immediate threat to this planet. Uh, before I launch into the science page, this actually came in off the the world page, and you can uh, decide for yourself what this has to do with. Uh, with global warming and climate change from Associated Press. Smog thick enough to cancel flights in Beijing. Thick off the scale smog shrouded eastern China for the second time in two weeks Tuesday, forcing airlines to cancel flights because of poor visibility and prompting Beijing to temporarily shut down factories and curtail fleets of government cars. Gee, it's, it's, it's tough to, uh, to draw dots here, isn't it? The capital was a colorless scene street lamps and the outlines of buildings receded into a white haze as pedestrians donned face masks to guard against the caustic air. There you go. Uh, the U.S. Embassy reported an hourly peak level of this way they measure smog of tiny particulate matter uh, at more than 20 times, more than 20 times higher than World Health Organization safety levels. Okay, and then they go interviewing the person on the street. Here's Lu Peng, uh, an employee at a financial institution in Beijing. Let, let's get the dots connected here, guys said he will keep his newborn baby, more dots being connected here, indoors. Quote, it's really bad for your health, obviously, he said. I bike to work every day and always wear a mask. The pollution in recent years is probably, probably due to the increase in private cars and government cars. Huh. Gee, you think so, Mr. Lou? Okay, and from there I will go off the world page to these next uh, five stories off of the uh, environmental pages, off the science page here on the mainstream media, Yahoo News. And uh, guys, uh, it, I could go off onto a three hour rant here. The, the, this is an excellent crop of stories. What I am going to do is simply give you the link to click on to, you can go on the science page, 
uh, to read these stories for yourself. I'm just going to gloss over them and summarize them. Uh, the, these are excellent stories, very, very in-depth analyses of what is going on. And as I say, I want to congratulate the mainstream media for standing up for, to these bastards and spreading the truth with a capital T uh, about climate change. But you need to go on here and you will find links to, to all of these five stories, to a bunch of others, and then within these stories are links to further and further and further stories. And uh, read them for yourself and pass it along. Okay, the, the, this very interesting story, which, uh, which I almost thought I was going to turn into a, uh, into a separate rant from Live Science. The article, Charities, Charities Funnel Millions to Climate Change Denial. An excellent story here in, uh, in, uh, in Live Science. <clears throat> A British newspaper claims to have discovered the convoluted way oil billionaires oil billionaires in the United States can funnel huge amounts of cash toward climate change denial campaigns while reaping tremendous tax advantages in the process. And then they, and, and, and then they go through a bunch of this and they name names. Here, a shadowy group called the Donors Trust is largely funded by billionaire Charles Koch. I think that's how you pronounce K-O-C-H, that evil son of a bitch and his brother and his wife. Is large, so Donors Trust is largely funded by billionaire Charles, Charles Koch and his wife Liz according to an investigation by The Independent. The trust indirectly receives millions of dollars in funding from a third party group called the Knowledge and Progress Fund. You gotta love it. Knowledge and Progress Fund. There's some double speak for you. Which the Koch family operates. If you don't know who these guys are, Charles Koch and his brother David are majority shareholders in Koch Industries, an immense conglomeration of oil and gas companies with a global reach and a definite interest in denying any link between fossil fuel use and climate change. A recent profile in Forbes called, called Charles Koch one of the 50 most powerful people in the world and one of the 20 wealthiest. Oh boy. And so the so then you go, so how does the IRS play into this? Uh, how was the IRS in bed with Charles Koch? Well, here you go. The IRS recognizes the Donors Trust <coughs> as a charitable organization <coughs> due to its status as a, quote, donor-advised trust. Jesus, it goes on and on, and this is about the Wall Street Journal breaking this down. Uh, and, and how that Charles Koch and all of his oil-drenched, uh, climate-change-denying billionaire henchmen get these huge tax benefits. How they line their pockets, thank you to the Internal Revenue Service, while him, my little tail, is being uh, hounded by the IRS to pony up $58,000 
uh, the Koch brothers are piling, uh, are, are, are padding their billionaire pockets with money due to these loopholes that were put into the IRS by these guys uh, by spreading their, their absolute lies and horseshit about climate change denial through these conservative right-wing horse shit organizations with, uh, with things like calling themselves knowledge and progress. Good God. Uh, okay, then going on the website for Donors Trust uh, talks about what they do with their money that they get from Mr. Koch is they line the pockets of university campuses. So they, uh, they fund the research of these, uh, of these universities. Uh, they, what they, they do is they, is they buy off uh, any, any uh, professor they can to, uh, to lend their, their name to this horse shit. Oh boy. Uh, you know, and then uh, according to the Independence Investigation, Donors Trust has given significant funding to yet another group called the Competitive Enterprise Institute, a right wing think tank. Climatologist Michael Mann of Penn State has sued the group, claiming it has accused him of scientific fraud and compared him to a child molester. Jesus. Mann, however, remains committed to promoting a science-based approach to climate change. Quote, I like to think we're turning the corner on this issue. The damaging impacts that climate change is already having on us here in the U.S. are increasingly clear to the person on the street. Climate change denial, despite the great degree of funding and organization behind it is simply no longer credible to the vast majority of the public. It is my hope and my expectation that we will soon transition from the unworthy debate about whether the problem even exists to the worthy debate to be had about what to do about it. Hallelujah. Anyway, an excellent article. I, uh, I, I heartily recommend you reading. And from there, let's go over to that excellent article, to this absolutely horseshit article, which is no, no fault of the Associated Press. It's just uh, the, 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 the whole article, this very well-written, uh, well-researched article, ultimately is a big pile of, of hot air. It is titled, Boyd by Obama, Leaders Press for Climate Reaction. So what this is, guys, is, is, is an article I, you know, I've, I've, I've had uh, mentioned several times in my rant about during uh, Barack Obama's I Have a Drone uh, inaugural speech on uh, Martin Luther King Day when, when he acted like he was going to make climate change uh, fighting a major part of his energy policy. I have done <clears throat> whole rants on this absolute horse shit, a lion sack of shit Barack Obama talking like he is gonna gonna fight climate change through his energy policy. So uh, so what this article is doing is, is is interviewing these other world leaders. All right, Barack Obama is going to fight climate change and uh, saying it's about time. So I don't know whether these other world leaders and these analysts are, are uh, I don't know, 
are that they can't be this stupid. They cannot be this stupid to believe for one second that Barack Obama's energy policy is going to do jack shit about uh, fighting climate change. But anyway, you can read this article for yourself. Uh, I'll read a little bit of it. Uh, Dateline Davos, hip, uh, Switzerland. Hurricanes, floods, droughts, and a new, newly climate conscious Barack Obama are helping <coughs> boost efforts <coughs> around the world to fight climate change. Top political and financial leaders at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland say recent natural disasters along with Obama's inauguration announcement that he's making the battle against rising temperatures a pillar of his second term could rev up the glacially slow climate pact negotiations and revive fund right, right, raising for global action to cool the planet. Oh yeah. Quote, unless we take action on climate change, future generations will be roasted, toasted, fried, and grilled. That was from none other than Christine Lagarde, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund. This is the first sentence ever out of, uh, out of that evil bitch's mouth that Hambone Littletail agrees with 100%. Christine Lagarde, one of the queens uh, of the uh, of this evil cabal of international banksters behind it all bank rolling bank rolling all of these planet eating bastards pumping all this shit in the air the IMF and that evil band of henchmen admitting at the world economic forum that future generations will be roasted, toasted, fried, and grilled. Thank you very much to the policies of the International Monetary Fund. <clears throat> oh boy, and uh, then, then they go, so they, they just have all this input and from Christine Lagarde, here's the UN's climate chief, uh, Christina Figueres, uh, talking to the uh, talking to the Associated Press uh, about how Obama's emphasis on climate is quote definitely a political boost. Oh boy. Uh, Here's the, and then right after that, the UN climate talks, all these various horseshit UN climate talks, now two decades in the making, have so far failed, <coughs> failed to reduce carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions that most scientists say are warming the earth. Participants at the Davos Economic Forum which identifies extreme weathers as one of the top risks to the global economy called for global action. And uh, so then they talk about how these all these governments are pointing fingers at e each other. Then they uh, go look at how Costa Rica, there you go, how Costa Rica is, uh, is saving the planet uh, here is European Union Climate Commissioner Connie Hodegaard. I guess this is, I guess the, this is all a bunch of women fighting climate change. Call the battle against global warming the greatest, the greatest economic challenge of this century. 
Oh boy, this goes, this goes on and on. Uh, and uh, I, I strongly uh, urge you to read this. I always just skip to the bottom of these articles because uh, I, I have several more articles to get through. But uh, just as I just as I agreed with IMF, the henchwoman Christine, uh, here I am uh, agreeing with Thomas Donahue, president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> U.S. Chamber of Commerce said despite Obama's speech, there would still be resistance, meaning resistance to uh, any attempt at fighting climate change in this country. Quote, while the president will pursue what we believe is an aggressive climate change policy, yeah, and I guess you believe that Santa Claus is real, they're not going to get it through Congress, Donahoe predicted. It's going to be done on a regulatory basis, and that's going to create a different approach to dealing with this very important but controversial subject. Regulatory approach, my ass. But the guy is absolutely dead center on target, even if Barack Obama gave one shit about climate change, uh, there is no way, there is no way he'd ever get it through Congress. Do you get it, guys? Anyway, and as long as we're, and that will segue from into this article from the Atlantic Wire, the Atlantic Wire, uh, about Obama. The title of this one is How Obama Could Nix the Keystone Pipeline, Pipeline and Why He Won't. Uh, I've had rants about this before. Uh, President Barack Obama, the planet-saving messiah of the Sierra Club, uh, has no intention of blocking the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, I predict he will uh, sign off on it in the next six weeks, is, is, is my guess, to prove how committed he is to fighting climate change. The poster child of Barack Obama's horseshit commitment to fighting climate change will, will be uh, proven uh, when, when he rubber stamps the Keystone Pipeline. Okay, from the Atlantic Wire, President Obama will be confronted with the first big policy decision of his second term where environmentalists and business interests are at odds. The Keystone XL oil pipeline, despite promising to act on climate change in his inaugural speech, all signs, all signs point to the controversial project going forward. On Wednesday, we're talking yesterday, I'm sorry, we're talking uh, last, last Wednesday. A majority of senators, including 44 Republicans and 9 Democrats, sent a letter to President Obama urging him to move forward on Keystone. A massive pipeline that would carry oil from Canadian tar sands to American refineries in the Gulf Coast. Nebraska Governor Dave Heineman has given his approval to the plans, leaving Key, now leaving Keystone's fate in Obama's hands. There you go. And then this is an excellent article breaking down how first, how Obama, anytime he wants to, Obama has several ways of canning this. 
of counting it. He has no intentions of what breaks down, how he can do it, and then it goes from there, breaking down why Obama will most likely approve the Keystone XL, uh, most likely my ass. Uh, environmentalists would like to think Obama's inaugural promise to respond to the threat of climate change means that he will stop the Keystone XL. But Obama's record on the issue leaves little room for optimism. Obama was supposedly against the pipeline before he, before he was for it, before he put off making a decision till after the election, that little chicken shit. Uh, last year, he spoke favorably about the project while visiting a portion of the Keystone uh, Pipeline in Oklahoma. And when we look at financial contributions, Obama has accepted. The president seems a bit, <coughs> a bit too cozy with oil companies to deliver a fateful blow on the Keystone XL. As green energy researcher Steve Horn noted earlier this week, Obama's inauguration was funded in part by Exxon Mobil. You know? <coughs> Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil paid for the I Have a Drone speech. Where Barack Obama promised to get tough on climate change. Exxon Mobil, at least their, their CEO, Rex Tillerson, ha has admitted that climate change is real is man-made and is caused by the burning of his products and his advice to us on this planet is deal with it. So as long as we're talking about uh, the, the uh, Keystone XL pipeline, let's talk about the shit that's running through it and which is that dirty, filthy oil coming from the Alberta tar sands. The Alberta tar sands, one of the single biggest environmental boondoggles going on on this planet that the United States gasoline consumers, such as you, if you have gasoline in your car, aren't pumping in your car every day. Scientific American. This is a long, long, if I were to read this article, it would probably take me an hour. I'll touch on it. I strongly advise you to read this excellent article from Scientific American titled, How Much Will Tar Sands Oil Add to Global Warming? Now, uh, I don't know how they came up with this, uh, how they came up with this title exactly, because this is a long, in-depth article. It, it's kind of a, a, a feature uh, story on one of my Humpty Dumpty tribe heroes, James Hansen, the NASA climatologist James Hansen. Uh, talks a lot about him, one of my heroes. Uh, his his comments on uh, <coughs> uh, on the on the Keystone XL pipeline. Quote: Moving to tar sands, one of the dirtiest most carbon intensive fuels on this planet is a step in exactly the opposite direction of, of where we need to, of where Obama needs to be going on climate change. Indicating either that governments 
don't understand the situation or that they just don't give a damn. Like hell, they don't understand the situation. You know, they don't give a damn. These global governments from, from Barack Obama to, uh, to Chavez, to Hugo Chavez, they understand damn well that, that they are sending this planet into a burning lake of fire and they don't give a damn. Jesus. He adds, people who care should draw the line. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Oh, boy. Uh, so, Hanson, you know, I was talking about this letter that all these uh, senators were sending Obama last week about approving the, uh, the, the Keystone Pipeline. Well, Hanson and 17 of his fellow climate scientists at, at the same time were sending a letter last week urging President Barack Obama to reject the pipeline. Simply put, building the pipeline and enabling more tar sands production runs counter to both national and planetary interest, the researchers wrote. The year of review that you asked for, President Obama, on the project made it clear exactly how pressing the climate issue really is. Oh, boy. <coughs> so at the same time all this is happening, the U.S. continues to import nearly 9 billion barrels of oil per day and burns nearly a billion metric tons of coal annually. And China's coal burning is even larger and continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Do you remember the first the, the, the story I opened this rant with, if you want to find out where, where, where that's taken, China. And, and, and this, is what, uh, this, is, th this is probably the most important sentence in the whole story. And China is one alternative customer e eager for the oil from Canada's tar sands. And this is the bottom line, guys. He, and Obama knows damn well. Uh, that if he does not approve the, this pipeline, that they're just going to pipe all this shit to China. If the U.S. doesn't want it, China will be glad to take it. And it doesn't matter if the U.S. or China is burning it. It is going into this planet's atmosphere and killing us all. This is the ultimate joke. Obama is not stupid. I just wish he would come out and, and say, screw it, guys. Ham on little Dale is right. It doesn't make any goddamn difference if I approve the Keystone Pipeline or not. If we don't want it, China will take it. Anyway, guys, this goes on and on and on, breaking down how much, uh, how much uh, greenhouse gases, it doesn't matter who burns it. And, you know, uh, depending on how you, uh, on, on how you figure out the numbers, and there's all these ways to try to figure out, but it's a shitload, okay? That's the bottom line. It is a shitload of, uh, of greenhouse gases that uh the uh but you can uh, i mean this goes on and on and on and on good god let me uh 
let, let me just drop to the last two paragraphs. Uh, it took me about 40 pages. Okay, uh, the last two paragraphs. Even as increased oil production in the U.S. diminishes the demand for tar sands derived fuel domestically, if Keystone reaches the Gulf Coast, that oil will still be refined and exported. <coughs> At the same time, Obama <coughs> pledged to respond to climate change and argued for U.S. leadership in the transition to, quote, sustainable energy sources uh, during his inaugural address. Approving Keystone might lead in the opposite direction. Might lead? Okay, for the tar sands, this is back going to, to uh, Dr. Hansen from NASA. The climate forcing per unit energy is higher than most fossil fuels, says Hansen, who believes he is fighting for the global climate, his five grandchildren will endure. Oh, as Hansen says, and this is the last sentence, quote, going after tar sands, incredibly dirty, destroying the local environment, meaning up there in Canada, for a very carbon intensive fuel is the sign of a terribly crazed addict. There you go. That is what we are. Uh, George W. Bush, the most intelligent thing ever out of that moron's mouth. The U.S. is addicted to oil. And he wasn't talking just about whoever pawn of big oil is in the White House, whether it's George Bush or Barack Obama, it's, he's talking about every single gas-sucking car owner in this country and more and more on this planet, mainly China. When I started my rant in China, and before I sign off, let's just take one little, uh, one little uh, trip over there from China down there to South America. Let's just leave this rant up there in the glaciers of Peru and uh, Chile and Bolivia from Reuters News. Andean glaciers melting at quote unprecedented rates from Lima, Peru which is, I believe, the biggest city on the west coast of South America that is facing a critical water shortage. Eight million people in Lima, Peru, depending on these glaciers. Reuters News, Lima, Peru. Climate change has shrunk Andean glaciers between 30 and 50 percent since the 1970s and could melt many of them away all together in coming years, according to a study published on Tuesday in the journal The Cryosphere. Andean glaciers, a vital source of fresh water for tens of millions of South Americans are retreating at their fastest rates in more than 300 years, according to the most comprehensive review of Andean ice loss so far. Uh, quote, glacier retreat in the tropical Andes over the last three decades is unprecedented, said Antoine Robitel, the lead author of the study. Uh, the researchers warned that future warming could totally wipe out the smaller glaciers found at lower altitudes that store and release fresh drinking water for downstream communities. 
quote, this is a serious concern because a large proportion of the population lives in arid regions to the west of the Andes, meaning all of these tens of millions of people, including the city of Lima where this comes from, are directly dependent on getting their drinking water and irrigation water from these glaciers that are not going to be here in a few more years. Oh, the Choctaw Glacier in the Bolivian Andes, once a ski resort, has already disappeared completely. So there's one ski resort. There's one ski resort that all Charles and David Koch won't be taking a vacation to this year. Anyway, guys, I think I'll wrap up my climate change roundup rant for Wednesday, January 30th, 2013, and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous winter day in Austin, Texas, where the weather forecast from here is far forward as they can see into the winter of 2013 is more of this gloriousness. And I'm gonna enjoy the, uh, the non-existent winter here in my, my Hawaiian shirt. Bye guys.